Doctors suggest dialysis patients to stay away from high sodium foods during the holidays. China City volunteers distribute aid supplies and scholarships ahead of the Lunar New Year festivities. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Lori Chen, thank you for joining us. Food plays a major role in the Lunar New Year period, however, for dialysis patients, doctors highly recommend staying away from foods that are high in sodium. The boiling hot pot is the most festive cuisine during the Lunar New Year. However, if you have chronic kidney disease or receive dialysis treatment regularly, you should be moderate in your hot pot consumption. This is because the broth is high in sodium amount and can cause serious kidney problems. During the Lunar New Year, some patients had hot pot in the sauce, which caused abnormal electrolyte changes in their body. For example, too much potassium ion will cause irregular heartbeats and chest tightness. Many patients came to the emergency room to ask for urgent dialysis treatment. During the holiday, kidney disease patients should remember to eat a low-sodium diet, including low phosphorus and low protein. Fish and meat are both high in protein, which may cause uremic toxins. In addition, one must be aware of snacks. Melon seeds are very dangerous for dialysis patients. We normally ask the patients who have kidney disease to stay away from melon seeds or nuts because they're very high in phosphorus. Some patients will feel itchy after eating them. Doctor reminded that if you consume excessive food in one meal, then you should lessen the amount in the next meal so that your kidney won't be overloaded. Moreover, you should book an appointment to check your body condition after a vacation and not forget to take your medication on time. People tend to overeat during the Lunar New Year. Therefore, it's quite easy for people to consume too many calories and gain extra weight. Fortunately, there are some healthy eating tips one can take into account. Let's see what a nutritionist has to say. The abundant and delicious New Year dishes are very enticing, but they are also packed full of calories. A nutritionist suggests that people should cook with less salt, sugar, and oil. In addition, choose ingredients that are high in fiber. They should use vegetable oil and try to avoid highly processed sauces. The best ways to cook are either steaming or boiling the ingredients. Avoid thickening your soups with tapioca starch and staying away from fried foods. This is because the amount of oil used in frying foods contain a lot of calories. You should either steam, bake, or boil your ingredients instead. There are various ways for healthy eating during the Lunar New Year. You should avoid overeating during meals and limit your calorie intake. It's wise to have dinner before 6 o'clock and eat slowly for better digestion. People tend to go to bed later than usual during this festive period. So if you want to have late night snacks, you must watch what you eat. Fruits tend to be lower in calories than candies or cookies, so it's highly recommended to consume low-calorie foods when it comes to snacks. A good example is seaweed. However, only the ones that aren't fried and have very little seasoning. After dinner, you should avoid directly sitting down to watch TV or continue to consume snacks. It's advised to go for a walk for at least 30 minutes after the meal. This will significantly help you digest the meal and lower calories. Staying on the topic of Lunar New Year foods, many people enjoy eating snacks during this period. However, one needs to be careful when choosing what types of snacks to consume. It's recommended to choose snacks that contain around 100 to 120 calories. Snacks play an important part of the Lunar New Year vacation. How would you choose from all these snacks? To be careful when choosing snacks because some of them are high in calories. For instance, one brown sugar caramel cheese or 2.58 roots or a spoon of sugar coated nuts all equals one bowl of rice. With regular meals, the calories can exceed recommended daily consumption. You should pick snacks They are about 100 to 120 calories, which is not too much. Otherwise, if you can't help eat more, the calories will triple. Other than calories, you should also be careful of the sugar consumption. For adults, you should not consume more than 20 grams of sugar per day. Therefore, you should read the label carefully. 
notes that you must times the amounts after you see the label. For example, here says 2 gram per piece, and 7 pieces will make is 14 gram. That means you consume 14 gram of sugar after you eat the whole pack. Other than staying away from oily and sweet food, one should also avoid sitting down right away after a big feast because it might cause gastroesophageal reflux. Keep a healthy diet and exercise are the keys to a joyful and peaceful Lunar New Year. In our continuous series on water resources, we are giving you a closer look at the many reservoirs in Taiwan. Most people in Taiwan aren't fully aware of the troubles that the many reservoirs and dams are facing each month, especially in the southern part of the island. So what further steps can we take to save our precious water resources? Let's take a look at our in-depth report. Remember the A23 heavy rainstorm in 2018? This is Taiwan, soaked in the flooded waters. One can see the bottom of the reservoir. The once abundant collector is now the shallow container. This is also the same year in Taiwan. Taiwan has an average annual rainfall of 2,500 millimeters, which is 2.6 times the world average. However, where did all these precious water resources go? Due to climate change, the Taiwan that we are seeing right now is quite different. The number of days for rainfall has decreased, but the total rainfall quantity hasn't changed that much. The extreme weather patterns have directly made a huge impact when it comes to water storage issues in Taiwan. Due to the geographic location of Taiwan, sitting between a raging plate and the Philippine Sea Plate, it has long been caught in the polling motions. However, this has also created the beautiful landscape of high mountains and deep waters. Although this is also what creates the issue of not being able to retain its precious water resources. We have very steep slopes here, so if one drop of rainwater was to fall into Jane Mountain, it would only take within three hours before it reaches the ocean. Now if we compare that with the Yangtze River, even with flooding, it would take around a week's time. We're talking about from the very start all the way to the very end. It would take around one week's time, maybe even two weeks' time. Water resources come from the skies, but where does it go? A drop of rain falls into the Jane Mountain, travels through the valleys, and then makes its way to the ocean in just three hours' time. Compared to the Yangtze River, which spends around two weeks to drain out the rainwater, it's not even a close comparison. Since the terrain is formed at a disadvantaged point, it all depends on the weather. It's like gambling with the higher powers. Usually the house wins in the end. Is our ability to predict the weather accurate? Basically, we don't know much. A perfect example of just how hard it is to predict the weather occurred on August 23, 2018. It was as if there was a big hole that appeared in the sky. The Nanhua Dam was completely overflow with rainwater. The sight of that made the people in Tainan feel overjoyed because just three months earlier, the dam looked completely different. On June 2nd, our water levels dropped to about 20 million tons. That's only about 20% of the entire water storage rate. In addition to the Zhengwen Reservoir, it had already fallen to almost 0%. So for us at the Nanhua Dam, we predicted that we could hold out for only another month's time. The Nanhua Dam mainly provides water for Tainan, and there were 200 days that it had supported Kaohsiung City as well. Fortunately, starting from June of last year all the way to October, there were continuous heavy rainfalls. This had put the reservoir unit at ease. However, at the same time, it was such strange weather that they had never seen before. It was really strange because it wasn't normal for us to see such heavy continuous rainfall from June all the way till October. There were almost daily thunderstorms in the afternoons. For those of us that do not need to worry about water shortage issues, very few know about how in the south they're often on the edge of danger when it comes to their water supply. Kaohsiung does not have a large reservoir for the people to use. The drinking water mainly comes from the Gulping River. However, because they rely solely on the river water, a weird phenomenon often occurs. When it comes to river water, the unfavorable factor is that every time there is a downpour, the water will immediately become muddy and undrinkable. Therefore, from June to October, the Nanhua Dam will provide water for Kaohsiung. Then, in the winter months, Tainan will run into a shortage of water, so the Gulping River will be providing water for Tainan. One reservoir is in charge of providing water for a total of 4.65 million people in two cities. This is a huge responsibility. Is it wise to put all of our eggs in one basket? Under extreme weather conditions, if it doesn't rain for two whole months, where is our water source going to come from? The Nanhua Dam has sustained damages when Typhoon Morocco hit. 
It had reduced the storage capacity by 40 percent. If we do not hurry to build more water storage facilities, the future of both Tainan and Kaohsiung is hanging in the balance. After Typhoon Moracas, Typhoon Maggie, and Typhoon Moracot, the dam storage capacity has decreased from its original 1.5 million cubic meters to the present 93.8 million cubic meters. Looking at the example of the Nanhua Dam, many of the same situations are happening all over the island. When the heavy rain is hitting the ground, it's composing a warning melody. We have long been passively allowing the water resources to slip out of our hands so easily, without even a second thought toward the future. With the average annual rainfall at only 2,500 millimeters, we should be actively doing more to safeguard our water resources. Now we are going to take a final look back at Suji's major events that took place in December 2018. In December, Zhiji was invited to attend the UN Climate Change Conference in Poland. To support ongoing global campaigns to beat plastic pollution. And so we have to bring everyone together. Everybody talk, it's a global problem. It's not, it's your problem. Nearly 200 countries agreed to keep the temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius. It's a historical moment. Please come. Zhiji held 10 press conferences to promote vegetarianism. I would like to ask you, what would you say to the Catholic Church to convince Catholicism to join these sort of campaigns? People who, are, who have faith and who are in a religion quite controlled of themselves and are used to have a certain rules in their life. So that's why I see a lot of potential to include this in the faith-based community. Delegates from other countries were amazed by Zhiji's eco-friendly products. Dr. Ding, can you stand up? Whatever he wear, everything is plastic bottle. Plastic bottle suit, shirts, and shoes. Yes, 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 is plastic bottle. This is an image of NASA's measurement of the Earth's ozone layer. The yellow part indicates chemical substances. While there is an ozone hole in the sky, we only have one Earth. This cow named Manny decided to escape by jumping into the ocean upon knowing that humans are about to slaughter him. Gratitude, respect, life, and love. Working in harmony, sharing positive affinities.
Tzu Ji started to care for Guizhou, China in 1997. For nearly 22 years, Tzu Ji has not stopped providing love and care to this area. At the beginning of the year, volunteers revisited the Sandu Sui Autonomous County to deliver both Lunar New Year supplies and scholarships to the local residents. Education brings hope to society, and scholarships help students right out of poverty with knowledge. Scholarships give students the opportunity to change their fate. Many of them have turned from receivers to givers. I am also like many children here who are unable to proceed smoothly without a hitch in their lives. When I was a ninth grader, I left home and went to Guangdong for part-time jobs. In the winter of that year, someone in the village informed my family to come to Lalan to receive winter aid supplies. After I went back to school, I also received supplies from Siji. Life is like a piece of paper. If you encounter someone who folds you, bends you, beats you, or even frustrates you, you actually have some methods not to give up hope. It's like the paper airplane we have folded which can bring you higher and farther up in the sky. However, if you encounter frustrations, you look just like this paper, will it be able to fly? I hope that everyone can study hard, no matter what difficulties and challenges we may face. Children in the mountainous area are very filial, as they thought of their parents right after they got scholarships. It is hard work for my family to make money. Since I have received the scholarship, I will bring it to school and use it as living expenses. This way, I won't need to ask for living expenses from my family, and I can also reduce the financial burden on them. I am going to share some of the money with my parents for them to buy clothes and shoes for the Lunar New Year. People may run out of money someday, but the seeds of goodness will continue to sprout. When I saw that video, I was deeply moved. People who live a more difficult life than us are trying their best to give of themselves. So when I grow up in the future, I want to be someone who is devoted to society. At the Penang Tzu Kindergarten in Malaysia, there's a group of dying mothers who volunteer to care for the children. Many of them are over 70 years old, so the children will call them Dai Grandmothers. Today, we're introduced to you a 72-year-old volunteer who has been called Iron Man. Let's see what the reasons are. She underwent many surgeries over her body, just like Robocop in the movie. Every time I call her Robocop Grandma. I have metallic iron all over my body, including my hand, my neck, and both of my knees. 72-year-old Tom Seo Kim, who was originally a recycling volunteer, serves as a volunteer at the Tzuji Kindergarten every day now. As Tzuji volunteer asked me whether I could volunteer at the kindergarten for one day, I immediately said yes. Three days later, I decided to come here every day. 
She can always bring the children a very happy morning. Every morning after she measures their body temperature, she'll exchange high fives with them. Day by day, the children have already gotten used to her existence. Sometimes when she did not come, the children might think something is wrong. Grandma Seo Kim's title of Iron Man not only refers to her physical condition, but also her volunteer work. She also underwent a surgery in her hand, so she cannot bend her fingers. Despite the physical issue, she insists on strain beats. I counted the times and found that she did it for eight times to successfully complete the task. On that day, I was deeply touched by her perseverance. Grandma Seo Kim seizes every moment to do the right thing, making her life more meaningful in her later years. Everybody says that I'm like Iron Man, so I have been helping out just like an Iron Man. I seize each time to do what I can to help. I should not wait until I'm not able to do so. I hope I can volunteer until my last breath. Next, we'll meet a recycling volunteer, Xie Su Zhen. Her son has severe mental disabilities, leading him to lack in living skills. Fortunately, she brought her son to the recycling station to sort recyclables 10 years ago. Now her son is the devoted recycling volunteer. My son was a premature baby, born at about seven months. He was like a normal child until he was seven years old, when we noticed that his learning ability is slower than the other children. After graduating from a special education school, I thought about his next step. What is he going to do? At first, he applied for a job at the Children R Us bakery. In order to make the bread, you need to measure and weigh the ingredients. Although he has a high school degree, he still couldn't do the task. I couldn't let him just stay at home all day, so I thought, why not bring him to the recycling station? While we are at the recycling station, the other volunteers will help me teach and guide him to do the work. Mr. Tsai, who is a volunteer, asked me to be his assistant while transporting recyclable items. She gladly accepted my offer, but on one condition. That is to bring her son with us, or else no one will look after him. Ten years ago, when her son came, he didn't know what to do. Now his mother told me that after waking up, he will put on the sleeves by himself, even wearing the apron or the hat. He also walked to the Jinxi Hall from his home. He was never absent at the recycling station. Even if his family went on vacation, he didn't want to go. He wanted to come here and help. I'm grateful for Mr. Tsai. He's always there for my child, treating him like his own son. I'm happy to see my child volunteer at the recycling station. While doing the work, he's also helping the society. And at the same time, we're glad that he's able to walk on his own path. More Tsuji volunteers gathered together for a flower arrangement class. One of the participants was a grandmother over 70 years old. This really proves that we can keep learning no matter how old we are. Happy Lunar New Year, everyone. See you next time.